All right, guys, so a lot of people are concerned about the so-called wokeification of the U.S. military, okay? Because the U.S. military has uh, announced some strange new uh, policy changes that seem to be more in line with the so-called diversity and inclusion efforts that we see being pushed by the left, okay? So they're allowing... Um, you know, more different hairstyles are basically loosening the standards. I think they're allowing fingernail polish. Okay. Um, they are also uh, paying for um, transgender surgery, right? Like, so uh, sexual reassignment surgery. Okay. They're paying for that. They're making that free. And also, you know, if you guys remember, you know, in the new uh, defense spending authorization bill, right, that they were fighting over back in December. Uh, they also, uh, you know, basically taking steps to remove the Confederate names uh, of military bases. So there are many changes that are happening in the military that I think that a lot of conservatives are probably having some issues with. Right. And people on the left always want to criticize conservatives for being overly emotional about the culture war. But it seems that the culture war actually is having an effect on policy, right? It's obviously having an effect on what's going on in the military, right? And for a lot of people, you know, this is very concerning because if we are rolling back these policies, does that make our military less fit? Okay, we, we can't afford to be losing wars or to have a military that's not as ready or is not as fit as it should be because we want to be woke, okay? Like, this is life or death, literally right so a lot of people are concerned about this uh tucker carlson being one of them and he did a segment on fox news about basically the feminizing of the military right he talks about some of these policies and in response he upset the super woke liberals but he also upset a senior leader in the military so I'm going to let you guys take a look at this segment from Tucker Carson, and then I'm going to show you the response from the um, leader in the military, particularly the Space Command, and then go from there. Well, in China, where the coronavirus originated, a top advisor to the Chinese government declared that the country was experiencing a very different kind of threat, a more profound threat. The problem, he said, was a national masculinity crisis. Chinese boys, quote, have been spoiled by housewives and female teachers. And they were becoming, as a result, quote, delicate, timid, and effeminate. In essence, they were becoming people who might listen to someone like Tony Fauci. Left unchecked, said the Chinese government advisor, the feminization of Chinese boys would, quote, inevitably endanger the survival and development of the Chinese nation. In January, Chinese government acted on this recommendation. The Education Ministry of China released a notice entitled Proposal to Prevent the Feminization of Male Adolescents. The goal was to, quote, cultivate students' masculinity. Have you seen this on other channels, by the way? Kind of interesting, isn't it? China won't explain the reasoning behind this plan, but there are some clues. Last year, we learned that China has quickly developed the world's largest naval force. In 2015, China had 255 battle force ships. Now they have more than 360. And many of those ships are more capable than anything in the American naval fleet. So how are we responding to this? Well, at the White House yesterday, Joe Biden addressed it effectively. What's the American military's response? Here's what Joe Biden said. Some of it's relatively uh, straightforward work, where we're making good progress, designing body armor that fits women properly, tailoring combat uniforms for women, creating maternity flight suits, and updating, uh, updating requirements for their st hairstyles. And some of it is going to take an, uh, you know, an, an intensity of purpose and mission to really change the culture and habits that cause women to leave the military. So we've got new hairstyles and maternity flight suits. Pregnant women are going to fight our wars. It's a mockery of the U.S. military. While China's military becomes more masculine as it's assembled the world's largest navy, our military needs to become, as Joe Biden says, more feminine. Whatever feminine means anymore, since men and women no longer exist. The bottom line is it's out of control and the Pentagon's going along with this. Again, this is a mockery of the U.S. military and its core mission, which is winning wars.
All right, guys. So as you can see, Tucker Carlson's argument is essentially that, um, you know, we're feminizing our military, which is going to make us less fit to win wars. Now, obviously, this is a controversial take. OK, so in response to this, Marine Corps Master Gunnery Sergeant Scott Stalker responded to Tucker Carlson with his own opinion on the subject matter. Let's take a listen. Drama TV. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what I call it. I'll apologize up front and tell you that I don't have cable news at home. I don't have it here in the office and I don't watch a lot of drama TV. I understand some comments were made yesterday and I watched the clip that Mr. Carlson produced as he referred to pregnant women in the military. I'll remind everyone that his opinion, which he has a, a right to, is based off of actually zero days of service in the armed forces. Let me offer you my opinion. My opinion is based off of 28 years of actual service in the military, 28 years in the Marine Corps, in combat operations out at sea and in garrison. And so he was talking specifically about pregnant women in the armed forces today and how it makes us less, less lethal and less fit and less ready. Let me tell you where he's wrong. Those decisions were made by medical professionals, by commanders and our civilian leadership that allows for women to have more time with their children to recuperate, to get fit and ready, to take that time that's necessary that our medical professionals know is needed which actually makes us a more lethal and ready and fit force, ready to fight the wars of today and the wars of tomorrow. The bottom line is that we value women in our, in our armed forces. We value the, those that have served in the past and we value those that have served today. We value our families in the military. I wanna say God bless everyone that is serving today. God bless the women that are serving today. God bless the men and women that are serving today. God bless our country, our partners and our allies. Let's get back to work. Let's remember that those opinions were made by an individual who has never served a day in his life. Let's remember that's all about drama TV. God bless America. Semper Fidelis. Here's what I think, right? As you can see, his main argument is that, hey, uh, Tucker Carlson has zero military experience, right? And because Tucker Carlson has zero military experience, uh, basically his opinion is irrelevant. That, that's essentially what he's arguing. And then he's also saying that, hey, we made this decision with uh, medical professionals and our leadership and civilian leadership. That's essentially his two arguments. OK, so my opinion on this is pretty simple. Right. Um, in reference to fitness for the military. Right. Like, listen, my opinion is this. As long as they can perform. Right. If they can perform up to the standards. If no standards are being lowered because of these changes. You know, it, it is what it is. I don't necessarily agree that our military is reading materials that, you know, that makes people think that America is a terrible country because why would you fight for a terrible country? Right. I don't really like that. But at the same time, as long as they're ready, they're ready. Right. That's the only thing that matters to me personally. But in regards to the whole military experience thing to have an opinion, um, I, I really don't like this argument because technically the president of the United States is the commander and chief right he, he has the final say so in the supreme authority over the u.s armed forces and the president of the united states it's not required that he serve in the military now a lot of presidents have okay but it's not required so if his argument is correct then why is it that the president has any authority over the military because what he's saying is that in order for your opinion to actually mean something you actually need to have military experience and the commander in chief of the military doesn't have to have that experience he doesn't have to have military experience so that's why i think his argument kind of falls apart in terms of him using military experience as a reason why tucker can't have the opinion that he's having right i don't think tucker's opinion is off base i mean i think it i think it's in good faith i think uh, any reasonable person would worry that we're making a lot of accommodations that may make us less fit right any reasonable person will worry about that. So I don't think his comments are necessarily off base. But to me personally, you know, it just comes down to as long as performance is up to par, right? That you're not making accommodations on performance. Hey, it is what it is, right? But there is an argument to be made that some of these changes, particularly the more woke changes in terms of the reading materials that is reportedly being passed around the military, like the anti-racist stuff, you know, America's bad stuff. We could argue that that could have an effect on the morale of the military, right? On fighting spirit, right? On recruitment in the military, 
okay, and pride for country, things of that nature, right? You know, believing that you're fighting for something greater than yourself, something that is worth fighting for is an essential part of why you fight, right? And if you take that away, or if you make that less meaningful, I can see how that could be a problem. So that's what I really have more issues with rather than, you know, some of the other stuff, you know, long as it doesn't sacrifice performance, it is what it is. I don't think it's worth really making a big fuss about. Long as performance is good. But like I said, there are some things that I think can affect performance. Certainly mental performance, if nothing else. But I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys think that some of these woke slash more feminine changes to the military are going to impact performance? Or do you think that it's not a big deal and that, you know, the military will be fine regardless? So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.